the general manager of the Atlanta Hawks today because there was a process. Alston and Bird interviewed 19 people. They went through 24,000 documents. They came with a conclusion that, um, and a recommendation for a punishment, which I took their advice and then far exceeded their advice as far as my punishment, which I've kept private. People are hurt. My biggest message is you come and you cheer for the players. The players didn't do anything. Don't punish the players. These guys are hurting as bad as anyone. I just said to them, say what's in your heart. Feel what you have to feel. And I apologized to them. I said, you wear Atlanta on your chest. You certainly don't deserve this. Hawks CEO Steve Kuhn and Ferry has been disciplined by the CEO for making racially charged comments about Luol Deng when the team pursued the free agent this year. The team did not provide any of the details of the discipline. However, after a scouting report surfaced in which Ferry tells the ownership group that Deng is, quote, has a little African in him and was a two-faced liar and cheat, it was unfortunate. Luol Deng released a statement that which, which read in part, I'm proud to say I actually have a lot of African in me, not just a little. For my entire life, my identity, identity has been a source of pride and strength. Among my family and friends in my country of South Sudan and across the broader continent of Africa, I can think of no greater privilege than to do what I love for a living while also representing my heritage on the highest stage. Unfortunately, the comment about my heritage was not made with the same respect and appreciation. Stephen A., those, uh, we're asking, uh, we're talking about Ferry. Are you okay uh, with him staying on as GM? No, I'm not. Um, he needs to go, but it's not because I believe he did something that was a fireable offense. If indeed Danny Ferry is telling the truth when he says that he read a scouting report, he simply made the mistake of reading what was on the scouting report and not editing himself before he read what he read. I don't think that's grounds for firing. But the reason why I think he has to go, Skip, is because I'm in the minority. By and large, the African-American community in the city of Atlanta, okay, they're not going to let it go. And the fact that Hawk CEO and co-owner Steve Conan, Coonan came out and said what he said yesterday, to me, only heightens uh, the, the, the reality that Danny Ferry has to go. And the reason why it does is because he said, listen, people are hurting. People are upset. We apologize for that. Come root for the players. Don't punish the players. Well, you have an opportunity to manipulate that by making the decision that your patrons apparently want you to make. Danny Ferry, to me, made a mistake. Um, like I told you yesterday, I spoke to Billy King Black man, general manager, Brooklyn Nets, formed with the Philadelphia 76ers. I've known Billy King close to 20 years. He's a beautiful person. Billy King called Danny Ferry his best friend, mm. said he's known him since he was 15 years of age, says the man was in his wedding, and says that Danny Ferry doesn't have a racist bone in his body. I've spoken to former players that played under Danny Ferry in Atlanta as well as Cleveland. They said the same thing. I've spoke to people connected to the San Antonio Spurs organization. They vouched for Danny Ferry. This notion that Danny Ferry is a racist is unfair, it's incendiary, it's excessive, it's wrong. Because if you can't prove that somebody is a racist, you have no business saying it. If you feel that way, then stand front and center and articulate why you feel that way. For somebody to have such an incendiary label attached to them, they deserve the right and the opportunity to face their accusers as opposed to people hiding behind other folks. But that doesn't negate the fact that the heat that has been brought to bear is what it is. It does not mean that Danny Ferry shouldn't be a general manager in this league. It doesn't mean he's not qualified. It doesn't mean he's done a bad job. It doesn't mean that he wouldn't do a good job for somebody else. It just means that in the city of Atlanta, you lost them. They don't want you. And if that's the reality, then you simply have to move on. Okay, so bottom line, your position is not a racist, but for the, the sake of the brand of the Atlanta Hawks, the image of the Hawks, because so many in the black community in Atlanta, Georgia, have 
have leaped to the conclusion that you are, you, you, you do at least have racist tendencies, that it's, it's such a bad look for the franchise that he must be gone, right? And that's it. Okay, yes. I'm, okay, I'm with you. Now, I've had 48 hours to do some homework on this and to let it sink in deeper and deeper into my brain. And I got to tell you, I'm having some issues here. Let's, let's reiterate what happened. The bottom line to what happened was that Danny Ferry, who did play for Duke, did make a big offer to try to sign Luol Ding, who played for Duke. So let's, let's be fair to Danny that, that what, the bottom line to what happened was that despite what he read to the investors over the conference call, he then went out and, and did his darndest to try to sign Luol Ding, correct? Because Miami slightly okay. outbid the Atlanta Hawks, and Luol thought that in the wake of LeBron yeah. and Miami, okay, well, that might be a better fit for me and a little more money for me. But, but let's keep in mind, to be fair, that Danny did try to sign Luol Ding. Now, back to what happened. Stephen A. Smith, you've been doing your job for a long time. I've been doing mine for an even longer time. How many GMs have you talked to over the years? How many have I talked to in the NFL and the NBA who made some reference to how a player can be a little bit of a con artist or con man in that they, they present oh. one? Yeah. How many yep. times do you hear that? Yep. They present one face to the media the from behind closed doors. Oh, that, that yep. can be a different guy. Yep. Okay. I've heard it countless oh, yes. times. And we've talked countless times so on this I. show about those kinds of players. Better be careful. So, Danny Ferry calls another member of another franchise for which Luol Ding had played, doing his due diligence, doing his intel and his homework, and he says, tell me about Luol Ding. And that member of that franchise, not sure what level it was, because Danny's not going to give that up. He's not going to throw that guy, whoever it was, under that bus. But he said that guy, whatever level it was, scout or executive, said blah 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 what right. what Carrie read right and then Danny included that phraseology in his report okay. that he read to the investors now here's where I'm uncomfortable with how comfortable Danny was in reading yeah. to the investors you're, you're basically saying he has a little con man in him but why do you have to make it racial it disturbs me because why do you have to include the African reference? Why, why is it an African trait to have a storefront that looks nice but be selling counterfeit stuff out the back? You can say that in a lot of different ways, and maybe he does have a little con man in him, Luol Ding. He right. just might. But I don't love the phraseology, and I'm, I'm uncomfortable with how comfortable Danny would be to read well, that on a conference call to the investors. That's just me. Well, my response to that is simple, Skip. Number one, you have a point. Number two, Danny Ferry's position is that he read it on a scouting report. Others that were on the conference called 20 different people from four different offices in three different cities, Atlanta, New York, and Washington, D.C. Several of those individuals say that they don't believe that he was reading off a scouting report. And when have you ever seen a scouting report that said that? So there's some, there's some debate there as to whether he was reading a scouting report or whether or not he said it. You combine that with your discomfort from it, I can understand that. But, Skip, and maybe I'm going to make people uncomfortable by saying this. I've heard many people utter or spew something racially insensitive, and I still didn't find them racist. Okay. That's why I can draw a line. That's between fair. somebody who made a mistake, somebody who's yeah. ill-advised, somebody who is ignorant, not educated enough, or at least in that realm, to know better. And I can, dis I can decipher and distinguish the difference between somebody who makes a mistake and somebody where those characteristics are an innate part of who they are. Well said. And that's where I'm saying the difference. I am in no way okay. trying to explain away why Danny would feel the need to read that Danny Ferry according to my sources has said I I messed up big time I should not have read that I made a mistake what can I do there's nothing that I can say other than to apologize this is what Danny Ferry has said to numerous people my point is 
for that to be the thing that we utilize to classify somebody as a racist, I think is going beyond okay. the pale. And, and it's sad for me. It's sad for me, Skip, because I understand. At, look, I am a black man on national television. With my mouth, I'm quite sure there's a whole bunch of white folks out there that what? don't like me being in this position. They don't like Kerry being in the position That's that right. she's in. Okay? But, 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 but the fact of the matter is we're here. It's a part of life. The flip side, however, is that we have an obligation, Skip, not only to recognize that those people are the minority, it's not everybody that's like that. We also have an obligation as black people to make sure that we distinguish the difference between somebody who is inherently racist and others who made a mistake or, to, or are a bit ignorant to the sensitivities involving African-Americans. We, if we don't want, if we don't draw that line in the sand, if we don't draw that distinction, then we're going to find ourselves in a boatload of trouble because then we're going to have to make sure we're perfect in how we articulate and elocute sure. ourselves yeah. at every turn. Sure. And Lord knows we are capable of making mistakes in that <laughs> regard. Which is why I speak with so much caution sometimes. Mm, uh, caution. Uh, yes. Let's transition, shall we?